Hey everybody, my name is Silas and welcome to our newest video today. It's going to be going over how to play Caitlyn in the bot lane. I'll be laning with a Lulu and we'll be going against a Thresh and a Tristana. So we'll be going over the types of builds, uh, what items to go for against certain compositions like this one, and just uh, how to pretty much control your lane and in the end just uh, how to win the game as well. So we noticed that at least she actually showed herself in the bot lane there, so that's why we're being pretty cautious here. And we're just going to make sure that we don't get ganked. Um, the last thing that you want to do is give up any type of free kills. Especially if you know uh, if a gank was imminent. We see that Elise is back there in mid now. So that's why we can play a little bit more aggressive. Uh, the game's been going pretty good. Uh, we've been noticing that we can kind of out harass them a little bit. And to be honest, we feel like we kind of outclass them. So we can play pretty confident. I missed a couple CS there. But we can play pretty confidently in... Um, in our trades because uh, I missed a cannon there too, that's a shame. But we've been feeling really good in terms of like our trades and everything like that because uh, they haven't they have really been able to trade back as well. So you see Lulu gets a nice little combo off there. I hit the Q. It did go through some minions though so it doesn't do the full max damage but any little bit of damage that you can do is always good. Uh, the basic rule of thumb is that when they're auto attacking something, you want to auto attack uh, a minion or uh, auto attack them as well, so that during the time where they can't do anything, you get some free damage off. That's just the basic rule of thumb. And the main thing I like to focus on is, especially if let's say they're going for a cannon, usually I play really, really aggressively whenever uh, they have a cannon up and mines down, because I want to deny them that cannon or I make them pay for it. Alright, so let's see. Tristana's pretty low. We poked her up, poked her down pretty well, so we are doing a pretty good job at making her uh, zoned out, plus the Thresh as well. We've been doing this pretty consistently. Uh, Lulu is really good for this purpose, uh, just poking down. Your all-in fights are um, probably not as good as Thresh's, but since we have them poked down, they aren't really looking for an all-in. We pretty much auto-win just because of the fact that we've gotten so, so low already. So in this case, we have the Tristana really, really low. We could possibly make an aggressive play here, but um, I'm more about just getting the objectives and making them even more scary. Like, if I went in there, I could probably... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to. I was thinking that I could possibly, like, net in, uh, pop a barrier, and try to go for the combo, but since Thresh has so much ways to lock you down, I don't want to get screwed into the tower and just pretty much feed. In the beginning, especially with not much items, I play kind of passively because I don't try to make too many plays because I can't just get the kill so quickly. But let's say if I, I already have like my Bloodthirster, I'd definitely go for a little play like that. And that way I can just like quickly get in and out. But since I still have my starting items, just Doran's Blade, we're not too worried about that. And then, yeah, we're just going to rotate. We know that Tristana's back, so the bot lane's not too much of a warrior right now. That's why we can get a free dragon there. Anytime you guys are able to push out a lane opponent, just shove your wave, and if your um, jungler's near, healthy, things like that, just see if you can get a free dragon off that. Uh, a lot of times in solo queue, you're going to have to make the calls yourself, like the dragon timers, when uh, people need to rotate to get the dragon. Just make sure you kind of stay on top of it. If if you want to win, you have to show as much as possible, or you have to work for it as much as possible. And this duel, that was a very close duel, but we're not <laughs> Came out in the end there. I actually thought that he was gonna lose there at the end, but he actually showed up pretty well All right, so I'm doing a lot of auto attacks, and that's why I pick up my Zerk Greaves. We're not getting too much trade damage Let's say if I was getting um, a lot of harass onto me I'd I'd get a Vam Scepter, but since that wasn't really the case I'm gonna go ahead and get uh, my boots look for as much uh, damage there as possible. I Had a whimsy there on me, so that was, that was I think that's what got the last tick of that uh, cannon minion I just hate missing cannon minions. So since uh, we've been just, you know, much stronger than them in the lane, training better, I've been playing pretty aggressive, and best way to zone them out is like when they kind of inch forward, kind of run them back so that they they can't get their CS. And you're going to know that what they want. If your CS is low, that's what they're going to go for, and then you kind of position yourself against, um, let's say like a Jinx or an Ezreal who can... Uh, who can use their poke to get a CS, it's sometimes worth it to block it, especially onto the cannons. Sometimes I'll block it if uh, it's a melee minion. They're worth a good decent amount of gold. But I generally won't block it for a caster minion. They're not worth that much anyways. I mean, they're worth like five less gold than a uh, melee minion. So it's a little bit less, but you kind of just have to pick and choose your fights. If you know that uh, you can 
take the hits, just go for it. So they try to go aggressive on us here, it looks like, since we're trying to get the tower. I play a little passive, I could probably get a couple more autos in there. But since we have them on the run now, I'm going to burn my flash and see if I can get a kill. It looks like... Okay, got that. And I just kind of used my ult just to go and use it. But, yeah, there was no way I was going to get the kill on Tristana. She wasn't low enough. The one thing I could see in that fight, what I, I could have done, I... The Lulu was really, really deep in there. And she was uh, pretty much zoning out the Tristana from doing too much damage. And then I shouldn't have played as far back as I did there. But... It, or at least we got a kill out of it plus the tower but definitely I do think that I could have played that a little bit more aggressively a little better and that probably would have netted us a double kill instead of just the single kill there since the bot lane's pretty much all gone secured we're just gonna go ahead and just uh just uh, farm as much as possible hopefully they don't get that s ah they stole it oh well uh let's see yeah that fatty just took the a little farm. We could possibly, if Tristana stays here, we could possibly make a play. Uh, it looks like I thought she'd stay. If she stayed, then I think we definitely could have made a play. It's 2v1. Tristana's not too good at these little skirmishes when, especially at this point of the game. But since I'm pretty far ahead, I'm going to go ahead and, and build a Bloodthirster. I'm going to build that because I can probably keep my stacks up pretty well on the Bloodthirster. And I'm not too worried about losing the stacks if I die. But. Let's say if I'm kind of behind, I just need to build build uh, pure damage. Sometimes I'll go for an Infinity Edge instead of the Bloodthirster. Because if I'm behind the Infinity Edge, it kind of uh, beats out on the Bloodthirster in terms of raw damage. And that's when I'll go for something like that instead. Uh. That was, I was kind of hoping it wouldn't kill the cannon there. I could have uh, did. I could have used an auto and then my net, but I thought maybe it wouldn't kill it. A lot of times you just don't want to risk losing the cannon. Just use your mana to get it. It's it's worth using your mana to get a cannon minion. So don't do what I just did there. Just if you can make sure you get it, just make sure you get it. So since our bottom tower is down, I already shoved the lane. I'm gonna go ahead and just rotate over and see what else we can do here. We'll push them out. Any way to make Especially like a Zed fall behind is definitely good. I don't think we'll be able to get a kill here, probably. Uh, I'm probably going to have to just use my ult just to help them out and damage if they get a catch on them. Uh, yeah, it doesn't look like they, they were able to catch up, but... It does uh, pretty much shove him out of the lane. He's probably going to have to go heal, and then we can probably focus on to this the tower just a little bit if we can shove this up quickly. As an ADC right now, especially as Caitlyn, she's really, really safe. Because of really, really nice range and good wave clear. Uh, the best thing to do is when you get close to these objectives is to just shove the lane as much as possible and get to the tower and do as much tower damage as you can. Any bit of tower damage is always, always good. So I'm not worried about harassing too much unless they can do the, you know, un unless they can do the poke and everything. I'm just going to go ahead and just focus on tower, just bring it down as much as possible. It looks like we're going to get this one down. I use my Q just to get some more of that CS there. But let's see. Let's, we already got that pushed up. Everyone's back there. I'm going to see if we can make a little play here. I don't want to go face check into Fiora though. There's no way that I'd want to do that. Okay, looks like we can get a blue and a dragon's going to be up. So like I said, you know, always try to keep track of your timers as well. Uh, if you can, maybe they're blue. I generally don't keep track of the blue timers and things like that. Because a lot of times I just don't watch it. But I do always keep track of the major objectives. Like blue, uh, the dragon and the baron. Alright, so in this team fight, I'm a little bit low health, so I want to kind of sustain up and try to poke a little bit whenever I can. Uh, they do have a little better positioning onto the dragon right now, but let's see if we can uh, get some good damage. So Zig's got some nice poke there, actually. So the Thresh is, uh, he has to back away, and he's zoning out Elise there, so we could just go for this dragon here. Yeah, so Elise is all the way back there, and we know that if we just rush this down, uh, the Elise can't get here in time. And Ziggs is doing actually a very, very great job of uh, just zoning out the other team. And that's basically the, kind of the way to do it. Just for you as ADC, uh, you won't do as much damage in terms of poke as against, uh, let's say, like a, a Ziggs. So it's just let him do what he does best, and then you do what you do best, which is just putting out as much damage. So if Ziggs kind of caught here, we, or Zed, we can probably get a kill. And that's that's an easy kill there. He, he shadowed away, and then he flashed even further away from his teammates. 
That was an easy call for me, just ult and just try to get a free kill. Uh, let's try to help out our teammates. So in this fight, uh, the Elise is a higher threat, so that's why I was going for Elise there. And then, because uh, he does a little bit more damage than, say, like a Tristana right now. And then, he, Tristana can get away pretty easily too. So, I mean, so can Elise, but she was the one that's a little bit deeper. Tristana was a little bit behind, and then so that's why I went for uh, the Elise there. In team fights, you always want to focus on your highest threat. And let's say if someone's low, I, a lot of times I try to help out in taking care of the damage portion of the f for the or the damage enemies, just to make sure that my teammates don't die. Me. Everyone's back. I do want to back. I do have a lot of gold. I can get my bloodthirster. I can start getting that stacked up. So it looks like she's gonna try to go ham on me here. But with the tower damage plus my snare, she doesn't have a way to catch up to me for a few more seconds, so she's going to back up. Lots of waves to clear. <clears throat> Rule of the game for ADC, just farm as much as you can. Anytime you guys see an open wave, anytime you can get uh, some free XP, free free farm, just get, get it out of the way. Uh, I'm going to push out one more wave. <clears throat> I might get golems as well after this. But it looks pretty safe. Fjord might be kind of near... I'm playing a little gutsy here, but now Fiora's up there, so we're good to go in farming this out. Let's see, so I have 2600 gold. My next buy is probably going to be a Bloodthirster, finish that off, and then uh, work on my zeal. Well, I'll get my zeal, obviously. And in this route, a lot of times when I go for a Bloodthirster, I go for a Phantom Dancer. Uh, that way I get, if I'm going for, let's say, let's say this. If I'm going for my Bloodthirster, I always pretty much go for my Phantom Dancer because I'm kind of lacking on the pure raw damage of an Infinity Edge. So that way it kind of brings it back up a little bit. If I get the way I work with uh, Infinity Edge is that I usually just go for a Static Shiv so that I get the, um, the extra crit from the Infinity Edge already kind of makes up for the lack of crit that you get from uh, not having, let's say, like a Bloodthirster or something like that. So. Pretty much my rule of thumb is this, yeah, like I'm just going to repeat one time, my rule of thumb is Phantom Dancer with Bloodthirster and then IE with Static Shiv. That's generally, it just kind of depends. Uh, we have good wave clear and everything as well, so it makes it an easier decision for me to just get a Phantom Dancer. If, let's say, we didn't have the Ziggs, we wouldn't have that much of wave clear, so I would actually probably pick up a Shiv. It just depends on your team comp and it just kind of depends on how well that you'd be able to siege. But we can siege really well, we can wave cleave, wave clear really well as well. So that's why I'll just go for the Phantom Dancer. I just need good damage for the team. Looks like team fight. <laughs> Lulu's going pretty ham. She's a support and then she's all the way thinking of the tower and everything. <clears throat> so they're already far up there. They call for me to just go ahead and push this up, so I'm just gonna go ahead and shove this up as much as possible. And hopefully, you know, they keep them distracted enough where I can just get a free tower. They do have Ziggs, so he can keep them pretty pressed for pressure. And I'm calling for assistance on my team to uh, help me out here. It seems like they're still winning the fight, so I'm not really worried about rotating over. If it looked like they were a little bit in trouble and that they would need my help, then I would have rotated over. But it's not worth it if, if they look safe enough and you have a free objective right in front of you. Let's see what's about to buy. Oh, looks like Tristana's gonna try to duel, but Mid game like this, Tristana doesn't really have enough power to really duel you. I'm gonna let the red finish it off, but yeah, Tristana, it's it's just it's a silly way for her to just kind of throw it, throw herself at me. The tower is already kind of close to dead. It's not really worth saving if that's the point. The tower is only really worth saving for your life if it's already kind of healthy because someone else is gonna come by and like one or two shot it. So there's no point in doing that. And at this stage of the game, when I'm already I'm already kind of fed, and I've been farming really well. There's no way that she's going to be able to outduel me, so that nothing to be afraid of. I'm going to come back here and see if we can help secure this kill over here. He might get away. I think he will, so I'm just going to go ahead and just keep farming a little bit extra. We'll let Ziggs push up onto the middle here. So we got 18.25 gold. That's enough to finish the Phantom Dancer, and... Uh, for you to decide if you want to build, hey, I'm just gonna go. F yeah, I decided to just go for the uh, wave clear. 
instead. Yeah, we'll just go for the static shift. Like, um, a way to decide if you want to finish, let's say, finish up from your zeal to finish your static shift or your phantom dancer. A good way to kind of decide that is just look at the enemy team and see how much armor they built. In this case, the enemy team they don't really have that much armor. So, and plus, I'm already kind of far ahead. We can, uh, we can, I can be pretty assured that not having that last whooper is not going to be much of an issue. Yeah, this game's pretty much, it's very controlled. This is a game that the team's actually working really well together. It's kind of rare to see this a lot of times in solo queue, where everyone's kind of in sync and no one's really just feeding for no reason. A lot of times you see in solo queue where if, if a team has a lead, they just kind of play too, too gutsy and just try to like 1v, 1v3 or 1v2 things. Like, unless you're literally three or four levels ahead plus a two items ahead, then you're just not going to be able to pull that off. So there's no point of... Throwing a leads off like that. Hopefully we get to hopefully we get to some team fights here soon as well, so I can kind of go over how to team fight, especially with Caitlyn. She's really good with uh, the way that she can zone in a team fight with her traps, and if anyone gets near you, you just uh, net them so they can't really catch up to you. She has a lot of a lot of tools to really keep people off of her. She's one of my favorite eighty characters for sure. Vayne is definitely my favorite, but Caitlyn is right up there. Plus I love this skin, the officer skin. It's uh, pretty awesome. So we have Ziggs here, pretty much everyone else. Uh, Renekton's gonna push back that top. We're just gonna go ahead and split this. We don't really want to fight all in just yet because it is a 4v5 here. The Renekton's have to, having to push back a lane completely. Uh, I do want to push this mid out, but it actually looks like Ziggs has been poking really well. In this situation, so it actually, it's actually a decent, uh, yeah, this is actually going to be decent for us. They don't have much wave clear outside of, uh, Zed has to use all of his abilities to wave clear, because Tristana, she has to get enough autos, and unless she has a shift, she won't be able to really wave clear that well. That way we can get lots and lots of tower damage off. So like I said, as an ADC, focus on the objectives. Make sure you can do it safely though, so let's say, everyone else is kind of bad. You know, charging in at me. I'm just gonna back up a little bit. Just make sure that uh, I don't take too much free damage or anything like that. Just poke as much as, as you can, whenever you can. I was trying to ult there, but a lot of times it's not really good ulting on an Elise because uh, she can repel away. But if you do it quickly enough where they don't get to react, you sometimes can get it off. So we know Elise is back, so I get a few extra seconds. Oh, looks like she got home guard though. I'm gonna try to get this tower down. It's probably have to be the next one. Alright, so EQ away. Knock, just do as much damage, especially the squish, squishy targets as you can. Pop barrier, let's go flash out. Team's doing a lot of damage. Makes it very easy for me to clean this up as well. And Zed actually did a misplay there, in a way. I'm not gonna die here though. But let's say for that, um, Zed, he actually used his shadow to go through my ult. It's kind of good in a way because it might have um, killed him a lot quicker, a lot more quickly. But it led his, uh, at least, to die there as well, so it's kind of a trade-off. But for Elise, yeah, uh, yeah, she used her uh, repel there earlier, so it's not too much to worry about in terms of her getting away from the ult. Are they gonna get this nib? No, but that was a good, good fight. It shows how strong we are already. I mean, we have a huge lead already, so it just shows how much of a lead that we're in right now when we fought a four v five and pretty much won it out completely. So uh, it looks like Renekton will get out. With the help of Lee, Lee should have his ultimate up here soon. Yeah, it looks like his ult is up, so he's pretty sure he's gonna kick him. Save him. Yeah, okay. So we're gonna just have to regroup here and see what else we can siege up. We do have a free open inhibitor down at the bottom lane, so we'll probably have to go back to that soon. Uh, we do have to wait for those guys to heal up and everything, so. I'm gonna go ahead and farm safely, get our red, farm our jungle a little bit. It looks like Tristana's pushing down bot as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and shove that back so that we don't have to worry about uh, any waves going against our side. Basically you can tell if a wave is gonna be pushing depending on where it is on the map. So if you look at the bottom wave right now, it's on our side. So that means eventually it's gonna slowly start pushing to our side. So but let's say if it's in this range and we let it sit there for a little bit, over time, that wave actually gets really, really large because it 
pushes very, very slowly because it only has a small advantage. And it'll get to the point where that bottom wave, sometimes you might have seen it before, where the bottom wave usually have like 30 minions or like 20 something minions in that wave. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep shoving this up. Um, I'm confident my team to keep poking them out. And that way I can uh, regroup with my team here in a moment. They should be catching up with me in a second. So it looks like Tristan is here. You might want to try to fight me. That's just gonna be silly. Uh, I'm an easy kill and an easy kill still. <laughs> But I don't know if she was paying attention, maybe she was watching the map where uh, her teammates were at, but not much to worry about there. There's no way to outduel a Fiora, honestly. Unless you have more cooldowns, there's just no way. I didn't have a flash, she used her flash, so. But it looks like, yeah, our team's gonna win this fight. And with their ADC down, it's not as much of an issue. Let's see what else we can buy. Could do. I like Borks. I actually like Bork. I'm, I'm actually trying to decide like what to do with this uh, dagger. I'm probably just gonna just sell it. <laughs> because I don't think I'm gonna ever use anything that requires it anyways. So I'd rather just sell that over the Doran's Blade. If I was gonna use an item later, then I would've just sold the Doran's Blade. But since I'm not, then there's no point of keeping that either. Plus it's sold for more. Yeah, I can get my BO Sword with that. If you notice this uh, Ziggs is really really low health, so he has he has some big kunas staying in there, especially with the Zed. If he landed that Q, that would have been game over, but he's he kinda fed there, I think. Yeah, it's this game's pretty much over. It's pretty It's pretty much a dominating lead that we have. But like I said, just uh, focus on your objectives. Okay, so it looks like they kind of dove in. I want to get rid of that tower as soon as possible. Looks like Tristan has a free kill here. And then I'm going to focus on this Elise. I'm going to get away from the Zed before she holds onto me. Alright, so that's going to be an easy kill there. Zed is already so far behind that he can't really do too much damage. He was he already took a lot of health, uh, a lot of damage just trying to get that kill into Ziggs. There's no way that, there's no way that he would have been able to burst me down. So most of my team is dead, I'm just gonna go ahead and just uh, push everything else. Steal all the way, steal all the jungle that I can. Oh, looks like a free blue. Blue is not too bad on me. I kind of, I was kind of thinking if Lulu wants it, I was gonna let her take it, but it looks like she doesn't want it, so. Blue's actually pretty great on a Caitlyn as well. More traps, more quickly, uh, you know, CDR, and you can poke pretty freely as well. You don't have to worry about your Q mana, so. It's actually really, really good for Caitlyn. I had an argument with uh, someone the other day. Um, they were saying that... Because I was saying that I'm out of mana as Caitlyn and I don't really want to fight. And he was saying, like, you don't need it. You're an ADC. And he's like, well, you don't actually understand how Caitlyn works then. The... Caitlyn's kind of like a... Almost... It's not like a graze in terms of like a spellcaster type of ADC. But she does rely on it quite a bit because um, her E is really, really important for... You know, getting you out of a sticky situation. And then let's say you can EQ or trap before a uh, fight, so you know kind of like your safe points. Uh, just kind of plan out where your traps are going to be, so you know where are those safe points. It, it kind of zones out the enemies. They don't want to step on it because it is a little, pretty much a stun on a melee, so they won't be able to touch you. If there rains, it's, it's not as big of a deal, but uh, for anyone that dives you, you kind of want to know where your traps are. Uh, let's see, we're, we're kind of kind of a gutsy baron but we poked down this uh at least a lot i'm gonna try to make a repel all right so that means she can't repel into the baron unless she has flash so i think she's out so this is pretty much a free baron here let's just get to steal okay nope so it looks like a pretty secured win here zed just kind of fed there there's no way that a zed can uh steal a baron there's just not enough burst damage unless it's like a gragas lux you know, none of those other champions. I don't think assassins really. I don't think yeah. I don't think any assassins really have any tools to really just steal a baron. Maybe a talon. I think does his ult do damage to monsters. Maybe it does. But pretty easy team fight. It's. I mean, we're already winning so badly. I'm gonna see if I can just get some damage. <laughs> it's like Lee tried to make a play to get just out, of but I wasn't around. I didn't really capitalize on that as much as I could have. 
and that looks like it's game so hope you guys enjoyed this video and i will catch you guys next time and i'll see you later peace